Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we talk about the fundamentals of SketchUp. Today we're going to take a look at what could be considered maybe a basics plus command. This is the section plane. So we are going to hop right in and take a look at how that works. Let's go. Okay, so before we hop in, I do want to point out that we're going to take a look at something that as of the recording this video, we haven't touched on in a Square One video before, and that is the Styles window. So I'm on Mac, so my, I have these free floating windows over here that, that uh, nest together. On Windows, it's going to be part of your default tab bar. You want to make sure this is turned on. Uh, if you go up to Windows, I want to make sure, in the, like I said, on Windows, I want to make sure that I have the default tab bar turned on. On Mac, I want to make sure that this Styles uh, window is open and that's going to give me this um, not absolutely essential for what we're doing the fundamentals of what we're doing is going to be the same but when we look at changing the options of how our section cuts appear we will want to take a look at the styles so i'm going to hop in right now and let's just make a make a section cut so i got this cube this big box sitting right here um, what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and cut it open with a section and look inside so sections are here under tools we're going to come down section plane right here is the command we're going to use it's not part of the default toolbar it is however on our large tool set so if i go up to view two palettes on mac tool bar on window and click large tool set i will have right down here towards the bottom it's the second to last group right here is the section plane all right so regardless of how i activate it when i click section plane I'm going to get this little kind of rectangle floating on my cursor. What this rectangle is going to do is anytime I move over, move the cursor over a plane, it's going to snap the orientation of that rectangle to that plane. This is intentional. The assumption is that you're going to want to put a section in parallel to a face on your model. Um, it's not required. We'll talk about manipulating it. But as a default, I'm going to go ahead and click right here on this face. And what that's going to do is that's going to go in and cut a section right at that surface. So just right on that surface, just slice off this little tiny face, and then I'm looking inside my model. There's not much to look at yet. Uh, real quick, before we go any further, it is going to, any time I put in a section plane, it's going to prompt for both a name and a symbol. The name is what this section plane is going to be called in the model. So when we talk about things later on, like outliner, um, that sort of thing, that's going to be what this is referred to. So this is the name of the section plane. The symbol, it's actually going to put in these little little symbols right here. These little, little uh, callouts are going to say this. So I'm going to leave it section uh, 1, but I'll call it symbol A. I do, if I don't want to do this, if I just want to use the default every time because it doesn't matter, it's just, a, it's just a modeling tool. It's not for output, that sort of thing. I can turn this off by saying don't show me this again. I'm going to click OK. And you can see right away, it did get the little A that I put in there. All right. So now, before we go any further, before we manipulate the section plane, before we change anything at all, I want to talk about how to control the section plane. The, the section plane, you interact with it just like you would any other thing inside a sketch. So think of this as a big rectangle you drew. You will note that as you draw a section plane, it will stretch itself so that it stretches to the entirety of the model. So remember I dropped in that little re rectangle right here and it's stretched so it's bigger than this. This is the only thing in my model. If I zoom back, this is all there is. If you have some geometry, it's way over here on the side, your section plane on the screen is going to stretch out so it covers that geometry as well. All right, so the first thing I'll talk about, so you can see it's deactivated right here. It's kind of orangish color. The face that I have in here is kind of a dark gray and I have this big thick black line around the cut it's making. If I click on it, the section plane lights up in blue, but so does the section cut. So this is the actual cut, this is the plane. So I have the ability to turn this on and off. If I go to view, I have right here, do I want to see section planes, do I want to see section cuts, and do I want to see section fills? So if I turn off planes, that one's going to go away. But you'd see it's still black here because I'm still seeing the section cut. So if I come in here and turn off section cuts, that will go away to now I'm back to seeing just what I had before. If I turn those back on, section cuts and section planes, and I turn off section fill, that dark gray charcoal color I had in there that was showing my section cut disappears, and now I'm looking into the model. 
So what Section Cuts tries to do is it looks at what it's cutting and if it sees something solid, so right now I'm chopping into this cube, you can see there's a, a surface on the inside too, but it didn't get to that inside surface, so I'm just cutting through this outer wall, it sees that as being solid, so that's what this section fill does, is it fills that in. All right, so I'm gonna go in and before we go any further, I wanna cut a little further in so I can see inside this, this hollowed out cube. Again, I do that just like I would with any other geometry inside of SketchUp. I'm gonna click on Move. I'm gonna click here and just start moving that cube along. Or, I'm sorry, start moving that section along the cube. We do, oh, hey, smell it inside the cube. All right, so now this might make a little bit more sense how I see these different attributes here. I'm gonna go ahead and click off. Here's my section plane, here's my section cut, and here is this gray is my section fill. So now if I turn off my section fill, this makes a little more sense. That is what a section cut looks like. It's cutting the geometry. The section fill goes in and says, this should be viewed as solid, so I'm gonna hide it from you. Super simple, in a nutshell, this is how sections work. So just a couple more tips, of course. We're gonna just a few more things. Uh, one thing is, like I said, this can be moved just like anything else. So I move it with move, but I can also use rotate. So I can click here and I can say rotate this and I don't have to keep the cut at the original angle. See that? So I can actually sweep it around and cut additional geometry. If I put in more than one section plane, so I'm going to go ahead and click section planes and I'm going to put one this way. Watch what happens as soon as I place it. Uh, this will be... B, and then I'll do the same thing. I'll click on move. I'll grab this plane, I'll pull it in this way. Um, look what happened. I'm showing this plane, but not this plane. By default, only one section plane can be active at a time. To change which plane is active, you can just right click on it and say active cut, and then it will show that cut. Switch that back by clicking right, active cut. I'm only going to see one of those at a time. There are ways we have have some videos on multiple section cuts or some stuff you can do with grouping but by default you're going to see one active cut at a time. Just to take just a uh, just a step further if I click on here if I right click on it I can invert or reverse excuse me um, and that's going to cut the other direction so now I'm cutting this way right click oops click on that reverse and now I'm changing you can see the arrows change sides too watch watch it's pointing that direction showing the direction of the cut reverse the arrow flips the other side I'm looking the other direction super simple there the other thing this is pretty simple because I'm looking straight at it but if I was to come in here and rotate this cut so we'll go ahead and cut it at kind of a weird angle uh, one of the things I can do is I can align view. Align view is going to basically line my camera directly up so I'm staring right at the face of this cut. So one last thing to touch on. This is I mentioned that we we're going to talk about styles a little bit. I'm going to turn this cut off. See this dark line right here and then this kind of charcoal fill? That is actually a function of the style. We will have a video that dives deeper into styles, but I did want to edit or mention this just for this one. Um, if you go into your styles menu and go to this last tab, it's got like a little blue box. In here, I have some options for my section fills. So I have a section fill color, a section line color, and a section line width. So if I don't want this big bold line, I want it to be just like everything else with those cuts, I can just change this from a three to a one you can see that goes down to a thinner line. Likewise with the section line, maybe I don't want black, maybe I want to pick some, some bright color that, to show this cut. Maybe I'll choose like a bright red color. I can get that in there. And then the fill, rather than that charcoal gray, maybe I want to go with a nice bright pink color because I don't know why I would do that, but I could. Um, so you can see there that all of that is editable. And if I, if I click and activate this cut, that cut information is shared throughout the model. It's not a one by one cut, it is part of the style, so all section cuts will get that same information. All right, so that was 
a, a there was a lot of information about section cuts kind of quickly, but it was the basics of what a section cut is and how it works. I know we touched on a couple things that we haven't really gotten into too much, and I mentioned there's some advanced workflows. Um, maybe we'll come back to that, but right now the thing you need to remember, you need, need to know is section cuts are how you look inside of closed geometry. They do function with you know layout and output later on where I can actually generate like well, section cuts or floor plans by chopping a closed building up or a closed structure, an item, I can chop it in half and look inside of it and create output from that. For modeling purposes, it's going to let me look inside the model so it doesn't, the, the outside of the model doesn't get in, in the way and I can actually work inside of it. So it is a really powerful tool in your modeling workflow. It's not just for output. Hopefully you liked that video. If so, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week, including one of these square ones, every single week. You'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave a comment down below. Do you like these square one videos? What tool would you like to see spotlighted next? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.